Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. It's been a while, but I'm back today with another Make and Tell Tuesday. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use our Shiplap Builder die to create some wood backgrounds. I'll show you two different techniques, one with a more rustic mixed wood look and another with a more whitewashed look. So for the first look, we're going to create a mix of different wood tones to create more of a rustic look. I'm going to be using Distress Oxide inks and some blending brushes, and of course our Shiplap Builder die. So to start off, I have a strip of cardstock. This is a three and a half by 11 inch strip of cardstock, and I'm going to be using my blending brush to just blend some different tones of inks onto this strip, which we will then cut with a Shiplap Builder die to create the different wood planks that we can then layer over a background panel. So I have a bunch of neutral ink colors here ranging from grays to browns. I have weathered wood, ground espresso, frayed burlap, and gathered twigs. And so we're going to just do a mix of ink colors and cover basically this whole panel of cardstock so that we can then cut it with our die. So I'm gonna start off with the weathered wood and just start blending you want to create a nice mix of colors. And since the panel gets cut with the dyes, you don't have to be super fussy about getting really nice, even blends. You can have a little bit of blotchiness and it's not going to show in your end project. So I'm going to just continue on building colors and working in the different warms and cools to get a nice variety of color in this panel. Now that our entire panel is inked and we have a nice blend of colors, I am going to take the darkest brown that I was using, the ground espresso pad, and I'm going to put a little bit of that ink onto a scrap of acetate. You can use the ink pads like I'm doing here for this step, or you can use watercolors, whatever you'd prefer. And I'm just going to add some water to that ink and do some splatters. The splatters just help to add a little more interest into our wood planks. So we're going to set this one aside for now and we'll go ahead and we'll do the whitewashed look as well and then we'll move on to die cutting those and actually assembling them into some backgrounds. So for the whitewashed look, I am going to be using just the lighter two shades of ink that we were using, frayed burlap, which is a warmer brown gray, and then the weathered wood, which is really a nice gray tone. And then I'm also going to be using some gouache. You could use white gouache or just white acrylic paint, whatever you have on hand. So first of all, we're just going to start by inking up this panel. This is a strip of cardstock, just like we used for the first panel we inked. It's just a three and a half inch wide by 11 inch panel, so I'll be able to cut um, two sets of the shiplap dies from this strip of cardstock and have enough to cover a full A2 card uh, base panel for a background. So we're going to go with a little bit of a lighter touch this time, not quite so dark uh, with our inking and just the two colors. So I'm just going to continue blending ink until my entire strip of cardstock is colored. Now that our panel is all inked, I'm going to take the white gouache and put some of that onto a scrap of acetate. So you could use a palette or whatever you'd like. And we're going to brush this over our inked background. So I'm going to take a wide flat brush, nothing fancy, and wet that with some water and fill that up with the gouache. And now I'm just going to brush this across my inked background and I'm going to try not to work the ink, work the paint over too much. Just use some single brush strokes. The more you work it, the more it will pick up the Distress Oxide inks underneath. 
and I don't want it to do that a whole lot so I'm going to try not to work it overly much and just use some brush strokes to add that over the top. I'm also going to add some splatters the same way we added the splatters to our rustic panel and I'm using some ground espresso distress ink here to create some splatters and I'm going to add those over top of our white paint. Okay so there we just have some splatters for a little more interest. So there are our two panels. We have more of a whitewash look and then this one's going to be our rustic wood look. So I'm going to give this a little time to dry before I die cut these all with my shiplap builder die. And when I do that I'll be back and we'll put these planks to use on some backgrounds. Alright so I'm back and I have die cut both of my inked strips with the shiplap builder die to create all of these fun wood planks. And so now we can go ahead and use those to build some backgrounds. And so you have a couple different options here. You might want to think about how you're going to use your panel on your finished project. You can either go ahead and add those directly to a card front right to the front of your panel. Or if you think you might want to die cut your shiplap panel with another die after you've assembled it, you'll want to start with a lightweight panel of just copy paper. So for example here, I knew I wanted to die cut my shiplap panel with the Habsies oval die. And so instead of adding that right to my card front or to a heavy cardstock that would be too heavy by the time you have both of the layers, the shiplap and the backing uh, to cut with a die, start with some copy paper. So it just depends on how you want to use that. So I'm going to take our whitewashed planks and I'm going to create a background directly onto my card base. So now that my card front is pretty much covered in adhesive I'm going to go ahead and start building my pattern and I'm going to use our whitewashed planks to build a chevron pattern. So I'm just going to start by putting one plank at an angle and then I'll just start building. So now that I have the top part of my panel covered I'm going to trim off all of the excess so I can use the rest of those planks on the bottom part of my panel. So I'm left with just a couple of tiny little areas that didn't get covered. So I'm going to take some scraps and I'm going to fill in those areas and I'm going to add some liquid adhesive to those just because it's such a small area and I want to make sure that they stick in there and don't go anywhere. And there we have a pretty chevron shiplap background. I think I'll go ahead and add some Christmas florals or greeneries around this pretty background and turn it into a holiday card. For my second panel I'm going to be using our more rustic looking planks and I'm just going to build a straight background. And I'm using a base of copy paper for this one because I want to die cut it with our fresh air window frame. So I'm just going to alternate and kind of mix up where the planks start and stop and also make sure that I'm getting a good mix of colors. So I don't want too much of one color 
all right next to each other. So I'm just going to alternate these and mix up the colors. I'll go ahead and trim off the excess around the edges and then I can use some of these smaller pieces to finish off my panel. So there we have a pretty wood plank background and I'm going to go ahead and cut that with the fresh air window frame. So there, I die cut my fresh air window frame. I was able to do that since I started with a base of lightweight copy paper. And now I can go ahead and turn that into a card. I'm going to embellish that, I think with the fresh air stamp set and maybe some wintry greenery. Well, thanks for joining me, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this look at creating some shiplap backgrounds using our shiplap builder die. I hope it inspired you to get your die out and create some projects as well.